So here we are, the end of 2022. So let's do a recap. Well, if you go back to the beginning of 2022, we, we were finishing up with the pandemic. Things had opened back up and we were starting to get out and see the world, which meant we were out spending a lot of money. But there was some major supply issues, which created demand issues. People wanted a lot of things, which created massive demand, but there wasn't enough supply because of supply chain issues. And that led to a thing called inflation. Well, inflation wasn't just created by the demand, it was created by the massive money printing that the government and the Fed did, and it led to interest rates being risen. The Fed vowed to destroy inflation. And their first thing they came out and said is, they're going to create pain in raising interest rates, which raised the cost of everything that you would need to finance, from your mortgage, to your car, to your boat, to your credit cards, to your lines of credit. All of them went up because the Fed is raising interest rates to get a hold of inflation. It's creating pain for all of you. But another thing that happened in 2022 was the continuation of the Ukraine-Russia war, 11 months going strong. Another thing happened, the death of crypto. That's right. A company called FTX, who supposedly was running one of the largest Ponzi scams there was to the tune of billions of dollars. But nonetheless, 2022 can be summed up as the end of the pandemic era and the beginning of a new era. And that new era leads me to the next thing, 2023. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. My name's Chris Noggle. This is What Now, What's Next? We'll see you on the inside. Happy New Year's. It's 2023, the beginning of everything. Well, it's the beginning of everything because the time is always now. We're done with the past, the future doesn't exist, so we have to take care of right now. And right now begins with your mindset when it comes to money. Now I understand mindset maybe isn't something you correlate when it comes to your dollars, your cents, and your investments which probably your investments aren't doing so well right now. Well, that's because we're on our way to a recession. Yeah, probably a really bad one. But in uncertain times, you can get your mindset right. Because uncertainty doesn't mean negativity, unless you make it negative. Unless you think about all the bad things that could and will and might happen, but let's just focus on changing that mindset. Let's just stop dealing with things that are out of our control and start dealing with things that you can control. And one of the things you can control is how you make financial decisions. Now, too many people out there make decisions based on emotion. You know, you're in the Uber and the Uber driver's getting you all excited about this brand new investment that they made a bunch of money on. Oh yeah, by the way, that was probably some crypto or some digital dollar or some, I don't know, whatever it was. And you got excited and you invested in it. And what did it do? Well, it probably tanked because you made an emotional-based investment decision. Now, you see, if you heard all that and you took it all in from that Uber driver and you sat back in the back of the seat and you started thinking with your mind, using logic, and you said, you know, I don't really know anything about this. You know, I really don't like this. Why would you invest in that if it wasn't something that you knew, like, and understood, but you didn't? Because you made emotional-based decisions. You see, if you logically sat back and thought about it, you would think, well, this whole digital thing, this whole crypto thing, it doesn't really have any fundamental basis. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. There's really nothing it's based on except for emotions, investor confidence. And right now, at the end of 2022, we lost investor confidence for the most part because of, why? Oh yeah, because of your emotions. Your emotions got shattered because you lost money. Well, how about your 401k? That's right. For the last decade, you've emotionally had a great feeling about your investments in your retirement because it's gone up. It hasn't been going down until recently. So if it might not come back, which it probably won't come back, which I'm certain it's not coming back anytime soon, you logically would do what? Well, you would find some solutions. You would learn to preserve and protect what you currently have. Instead of hoping and praying and emotionally thinking that your account might come back. You see, these are the things that we gotta wrap our head around when it comes to mindset around money. 
stop making emotional decisions and start logically thinking about things. Because once you start logically thinking about things, all of those problems that came along with the emotions go away. So let's stop, let's take a deep breath in. No, this is not gonna be a yoga training. The sounds that are trapped in your mind. This is gonna be a financial exercise where you need to just pause and start taking action on the things that will impact the rest of your life. Because a lot of things are about to happen in this new year. And a lot of these things that are about to happen are gonna be one of two different things for you. Number one, they could be the biggest opportunity of your lifetime. Number two, they could be one of the biggest mistakes you ever make in your financial life. So opportunity or number two, a mistake. Of course, you want the opportunity. You're letting those emotions get back in, but logically, how could this be an opportunity? Well, this could be an opportunity because of something that Warren Buffett says all the time. In order to make money investing, there's three things you need to do. Number one, you need to buy low. So if everything continues to keep falling, what does that mean? Well, that means you're gonna be able to buy lower and lower and lower. But you see, then he says, number two, you need to sell high. So right now might be one of the high points in your 401k or your investment account. So now might make sense to sell at what might be a high point in order to buy lower. You see, you can't buy low and sell high in the reverse order because that means you buy high and you sell low. And number three, if you buy low and you sell high, which requires patience, consistent action, and mindset and logical thinking, if you do those two things, you won't lose money. Buy low, sell high, and don't lose money. Well, let me, let me go back to another thing Mr. Buffett said. When others are greedy, be fearful. How much greed has there been in 2022 and 2021 and 2020? And I could go back for a decade and count this down. There's been a lot of greed. And that greed has escalated over and over and over as more and more people were making money. They thought it would never stop raining money until it stopped. It's kind of like that song, when the music stopped. So when others are greedy, be fearful. Now let's flip that. When others are fearful, it's time for you to get greedy. Now I know you don't wanna be considered greedy, but you know what? That's what you're gonna to have to do in order to take advantage of opportunities because in investing, there's always one of two different people. Somebody that's losing and somebody that's winning, always. Somebody that's buying and somebody that's selling. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's time for you to get ready to do that. So, you know, going into this new era, this new opportunity place that you wanna live in, you're gonna need this. You're gonna need lots of liquid cash. And I know all those people out there telling you cash is trash, inflation is eating away at the erosion and killing your dollar. Well, yes, that's true, but if you don't have these in a place where you can just access it, you can't take advantage of buying low, can you? Because if all your money's in cars and boats and all these other things, well, you got no cash to buy the low priced assets. Well, that's where this concept really helps you. So what I want to do is I want to teach you something I learned a long time ago. A secret of the wealthy. Something that you must know, but it's going to require you to change your mindset to learn this. Yeah, this is something that all the wealthiest families in history have used, and it involves your money. But really simply, it involves changing where your money goes first. It's a place where your money can compound, and when you take money out of it to go use it for another opportunity, you don't interrupt the compounding. You get to earn interest and dividends even while you're using the money. This place that I'm gonna tell you is a place where your money can live in a tax-free environment, a guaranteed environment, a place where your money is liquid and usable and accessible whenever you need it. And guess what? It's not a bank. You know what it is? It's your bank. We call it BYOB, be your own banker. And that's what I learned and that's what the wealthiest families in history understood. But the mindset around this is one of the most important things. Because in order to do this process, now I know at this point all of you thought, oh my God, it's a product. What, 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 what is this product? Where do I buy this product? Do I just go to Amazon? Do I 
do I go to the, the financial advisor? I mean, come on, what, what's the product, Chris? No, no, what if I told you it's not a product, it's a process. It's a process of you taking back the banking functions in your life. Let's get the 800 pound gorilla out of the cage. What is this place where you're going to change where your savings goes? Let me tell you, it's a whole life insurance policy, but not a normal whole life policy. You see, this is a specially designed and engineered whole life. That's right. We design it backwards. So you know whole life to be an overpriced, expensive, long-term life insurance policy that pays money when somebody dies, right? That's what you know of because that's all you've been taught. But let's talk about how the Morgans, the Stanleys, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Walt Disney's, the Ray Crocs, the Bidens, and all the wealthy families use this, including every bank that you bank at. You see, they don't use it the same way as you do. You see, they store capital inside of specially designed whole lives. And you know what, hold on, let's pause. Why don't you do this? Go to your Google, you know, that little thing up top, and type this in, B-O-L-I. That stands for Bank Owned Life Insurance. You see, banks are the number one purchasers of whole life insurance in the world. But everybody's told you this is a terrible place for you to put your money, right? And wrong. You just don't know how to design it the way that they do. But you see, I do. And I wanna teach you how this works. You see, if we take our savings and we put it over here into that whole life, but we design and engineer it so that it works like a bank account. And yes, we can, which means we put the money here and when we want to use that money, okay, let's just say Jim calls me up and says, I need a loan for $10,000 and I'll pay you 12%. Perfect, Jim, I'm gonna go into my private banking system, which is that specially designed whole life. I'm gonna take 10 grand out and I'm gonna give it to Jim and Jim's gonna pay me 12%. Now, hold on, let's pause. There's a couple things I left out. How much money was that specially designed and engineered whole life paying you? Well, it pays you a guaranteed interest rate and a dividend because we only use mutually owned dividend paying life insurance companies. So how much does that work out to be here in 2023? Well, between five and 6%, okay? Because all the companies are a little bit different. So we're making five to 6%. Now let's just say that I had $20,000 in there and I took 10,000 to give to Jim. How much money's left in my private banking system? Started with 20, I took 10 out to give Jim. Hold on, let me think, I can do this math, I can. Didn't we got a calculator? Oh, that's right, 10 grand's left, right? Because you had 20 and you took 10 out, there's only 10 left. Eh, wrong, 20 grand is left. You're still earning interest and dividends on 20 grand. Because the 10 that you gave Jim wasn't your money. That's right, your full 20 is sitting there earning interest and dividends. So whose money did I just give to Jim? Well, you remember when you took that, that whole life insurance policy out? What were the things that the insurance company promised? That's right, yes, a guaranteed interest rate on your money. Oh, well, they didn't promise you a dividend, but they had paid dividends for well over 100 years consecutively, and never missed one. Yes, a death benefit, that's right. They promised they would pay a death benefit when you died. You see, but what the whole life insurance policy also promised is that you could use that death benefit while you're living in the form of loans. That's right, so the 10 grand that I gave to Jim, because Jim was gonna pay me 12%, that 10 grand was the insurance company advancing me part of my death benefit. Therefore, my 20 grand got to stay in the account while the 10 grand got to go out and work for me earning interest. Pretty cool, huh? That's right, that's that uninterrupted compound interest that I talked about. Now, a couple negatives to that. The insurance company will give you part of your death benefit up to the amount of your cash value. So I could have taken 20 grand out because I had 20 grand in there, but he only needed 10. So now I got the 10 grand, but the insurance company is gonna charge me interest on that money. And it goes between, I don't know, let's just say four and 5%. So if I'm earning five to six, and they're charging me between four and five, I'm making a spread in the middle. That's right, you can do simple math. Banks do the same thing. You deposit money in the bank, the bank pays you 1% or less, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, but they don't pay you much. And then they lend it back to you at what? That's right, a higher interest rate. So isn't this kind of the same thing? The insurance company pays you between five and six. Let's just make this simple. Let's just pretend that the insurance company pays you six, which we have a company that does that, and they charge you four. What is six minus four? It's two. You made a 2% spread because you were the bank. That's right. You're just mimicking what a bank does. But hold on a second. You didn't make money once. You made the spread. 
but you also made the 12% that Jim paid you on that interest, right? So every single month, Jim's gonna pay me interest on that money, and I'm just gonna put it back in my bank. And Jim pays me the next month, and I'm gonna put it back in my bank. And Jim's gonna keep paying me every single month, and I'm gonna keep putting it back in my bank. And how much money did I make each time? Well, yeah, I made 12% for Jim, but I also made a spread. You see, I made money twice. Do any of you know how to make money two times on the same dollar? Do you? Because if you do, you're way ahead of the curve. But I just taught you how to do that. You see, I don't want to say this is infinite banking for dummies, but it kind of is. I just showed you how to change one thing, and that's where your money went first. And I showed you why, or told you why, you should consider that. Guaranteed interest rate, plus dividends, Plus you can take the money and use it and make a spread because of the uninterrupted compound interest. And I forgot to tell you that every single year that spread gets bigger. Why? Well, because of mathematics, of course. Uh, look up compound interest in that little Google thing and it'll explain all you need to know. So now I got you all excited and you wanna learn more about that. But to learn more, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you another video that you need to watch. It'll teach you all about the infinite banking concept and how to use it. Let's get back to the mindset. In order to do that, you had to overcome some mindset objections. Number one, you had to really decide what's right. What everybody told you, which was negative things about whole life, or what I just told you the wealthy do and what banks do with whole life. That's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is you need to learn how to do this. You need to change your mindset and change where the money goes. But then you also need to become disciplined. This is something we haven't covered yet, but it is discipline. And discipline does take form as part of your mindset. Your mindset, when we do this whole concept, remember, your policy is paying you interest and dividends, but you're going to make that money go to work. Now let's get away from Jim and let's do another simple one. Okay, let's just say you took money from your policy, took the loan from your bank, and you bought a car. Now, if you had gone to the dealership and you had bought a car at the dealership, what would have, have to happen? And let's assume you don't pay cash for the car. Well, if you finance the car, you would have to make monthly payments back to the finance company, right? So. This policy that you just set up is your banking system. Therefore, you're going to have to make payments back to your banking system. So this is called recycle and recapture. So every single month for that vehicle, you're going to take the money and you're going to make monthly payments back to your policy in the form of loan repayments. Now, some of you are thinking, well, why would I ever do that? That was my money at, in, to start and your mind is going to start playing tricks on you. But let's logically just think about this. If you just treated your money the same way that you treated the bank's money. And you made monthly payments back to your bank, which is your policy, every month, consistently and persistently. After the time, that time frame of whatever you financed your car for it, because when you're the bank, you get to choose the terms. Three years, five years, seven years. Heck, finance your car for 10 years. It doesn't matter, it's your, you're the bank. At the end of that time frame, what will have happened is you will have gotten all the money back for that car. That's right. You didn't have to sell the car to get this. You made payments back to your bank, therefore you got all the money back, plus you made interest. How many times? Twice. You made the spread, and you made the interest charged on the loan. You see, this is a mindset shift for you. Because what I really just showed you, and what the video I'm gonna give you at the end shows you, is how to get all the money back for every single car you ever buy, drive, and own. But see, it doesn't stop at cars, it can go to boats, it can go to trains, planes, automobiles, houses, whatever you want because it's a banking concept. It's just changing your mindset of how your money flows. And in that mindset, you can't steal from your bank. I know you're gonna think, well, why would I make monthly payments back? And then eventually you're gonna be like, ah, I'm not gonna make these payments anymore. Well, that would be stealing from your bank. And if you steal from your business, your bank, your bank eventually will go out of business, just like any other business that you steal from, right? Don't ever sell out and go back to their bank. If you just created a banking system why would you ever let your mindset shift back to using their bank, taking loans from their bank, making big deposits in their bank, having their bank hold your money and then do exactly what I just showed you how to do with your banking system. It's just mindset. It does take a little bit of practice because in doing this, you have to get used to being the bank. And when you're the bank, you have to treat your money exactly the way you used to treat the other bank's money. This isn't hard, but it is different. Another thing we gotta talk about is your perspective. Your perspective of your goals. What are your goals? Do you even know? 
well, I want to buy a new car, I want to get a new house, I want to do this, I want to do that. Great, all of those things take money. And why would you use anyone else's bank other than yours now that you just learned how to use this? You see, getting clear on your goals is really important. And I can tell you example and testimonial after testimonial of other people that we've helped them get very clear on their goals and then their goals became an opportunity for them. And their opportunities became a way for their bank to make more money. Now, we're gonna wrap on this. I need you to be realistic. You see, building wealth, which is what I'm showing you how to do, it takes time. It's sort of a marathon. And all of you are rushing. You're in a big hurry to get rich. And you're acting the part pretty well, but acting the part is creating you, well, a whole bunch of debt, you never have any extra money. Always seems like you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're always running in circles, chasing your tail, trying to act the part of being rich. You got that fancy handbag? Those fancy shoes that cost thousands of dollars? Oh yeah, you probably got the Gucci, the Versace, or you're trying to get that stuff, right? It all costs a whole bunch of money and it's just to impress people that don't matter. So just think, what does matter? Freedom. Freedom of your time. And freedom of your time also comes with wealth. Not rich, comes with wealth. When you obtain wealth, when you create your own banking system and every dollar that you spend every month is spent going back to your banking system, what you start to look like, well, that's right. You start to look like the wealthy look. All their money is in their own ecosystem, in their own banking system, just like your money's gonna be in yours. So now that you understand what the mindset looks like to have success. Now it's time to put that into action. It's time to actually do what we just talked about. It's time for you to actually go out there and learn the infinite banking concept, which brings me to this. Opportunities are about to be everywhere. You're about to be able to buy stocks at very low prices. You're about to see startup companies that you want to invest in. You're going to be able to buy cars much cheaper than there, houses much cheaper than there. All that real estate's about to go on sale. But you need to be ready, which requires you to first have your mindset ready and second, have your banking system ready because nothing else will work out if you keep doing things the way you are now. So with that being said, folks, I again want to thank you for your time. Happy New Year, because this new year, 2023, is going to be the best year for you. Not for everybody, but for you. Now in this video, I also mentioned that I was going to show you another video about the infinite banking concept, how you can change one thing and that's where your money goes. So right here next to me, I want you to click that video. That's right. It's going to teach you about the infinite banking concept and everything you need to know. You know how I know this? that's the same video I watched when I got started. See you next time.